All right, good evening, everybody. It is a few minutes after 5.30. This is the Town of Spencer pre-agenda meeting for the month of January 2023. It's kind of hard to believe that that is uh, the year that we are now in. Um, we will start with an invocation, if you will. Pray with me. Father, we thank you for all the many, many blessings that you have given to each of us. We thank you, especially during uh, this holiday season that we've been through. We thank you for time with family. We thank you for time together. We thank you for time within this town and all of the many great events that we've uh, been able to experience here over the last month or so. Please uh, grant wisdom and guidance to our board and the decisions that we make. And thank you so much for the town staff that work uh, diligently and tirelessly each day uh, to protect and to serve our community. Amen. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. So the purpose of uh, tonight's meeting, we have um, one agenda item prior to reviewing our agenda for next Tuesday's uh, regular meeting. And so I will invite Mr. Kyle Harris forward um, as we consider an appointment to the Community Appearance Commission. Happy New Year, New Year everyone. It's good to see you. Um, yes, I'm just going to provide a quick summary before I invite uh, the candidate, Brittany Davis, to come up and provide a statement. Um, uh, the CAC has interviewed uh, Brittany Davis, who lives at 445 Steeplechase Trail. Um, uh, she has submitted an application to join the Community Appearance Commission. Um, she would be serving a three-year term that would expire December 31st, 2025. Um, we've already gone through several interview uh, stages, so at this point, this is the uh, sort of final step in the process. Um, I met with the candidate as well as with the chair and the vice chair. We did had an excellent uh, first interview. Um, she was then invited to proceed to a interview with the full commission. That went very well. The commission recommended her appointment to the uh, recommended her appointment. Um, so the board of aldermen is asked to make a final decision on that. Um, I did want to note uh, before proceeding, and I made a note in my agenda item. Um, currently, there are no vacancies on the CAC. Um, we currently have six members plus one vacant ETJ seat. Um, Brittany does live in the town, so she's not eligible for the ETJ seat. Um, next week, y'all will consider a number of changes to the rules of the CAC that would actually increase the membership to 11. So if you do decide to appoint her tonight, um, you could potentially do so, you know, contingent upon next week um, adopting those changes that I will present to you next week. Um, but essentially, uh, if you think she's a good fit based on the information that we have, um, you can appoint her, and then uh, next week we can change those rules. Um, I did want to read, it's in your agenda packet, a brief letter of recommendation from Amy Ray, who is the chair of the CAC. Um, she wrote, uh, Mayor Williams, Board of Aldermen, and Spencer Town staff, this letter is to put forth my recommendation for Brittany Davis to join the Community Appearance Commission. Brittany has been interviewed by myself and the commission. We unanimously agree that she will be a good fit. Brittany brings with her a passion for maintaining yet purposefully growing our town in creative and beautiful ways. She expressed during her interview the desire to preserve our small town feel, yet see its growth. Brittany has experience in running fine art galleries and has a degree in art history. She has described what she envisions and uh, the ways she plans to facilitate that vision. In her application, she states that she is that this is not only for her future here, but for her daughter's future as well. On behalf of the Community Parents Commission, I thank you for your consideration. Um, and then you can also note in the uh, uh, agenda item, uh, Brittany's cover letter, uh, as well as her application form. So before I invite her up to give a brief statement, uh, just again for y'all, um, you can ask her questions. You could treat this as sort of an informal interview. I always say this is just a sort of very brief meet and greet. Um, she's already been reviewed by the commission, um, but I do want you to hear from directly from her. Do you have any questions for me before I invite her to come up? Any questions from the board? All right. Not at this time. All right, Brittany, you want to go up? 
Hi, everyone. Hi, how are you? Good. My name is Brittany Davis. I have recently moved back to the area with my husband and my daughter. I say recently. We moved, I guess, just over a year ago, but my daughter was born in October, so we were preoccupied, but we are happy to be here, and uh, things have settled down now. We're going to jump in and be as much of the community as we can be, so we're excited. Um, I didn't formally prepare a statement, so if I just ramble, somebody tell me to hush and <laughs> move on with my life. Some of us do that. <laughs> good, good, not just me. Um, I do have a background in art. I went to East Carolina University. I have two art history degrees from the university. I worked for almost a decade in fine art galleries in Raleigh. Uh, specifically, my specialty is 19th, 20th century fine art from North Carolina, Southern regions. Uh, I am very excited to work with the public now and not just wealthy, rich people. I really <laughs> love that this is a blue collar town and it's for the people and bringing art to the community in a broad way, not just for the wealthy. So I'm super excited for everything. Does anybody have any questions? You said move back to the area. Were yes. you from this area before? Um, my entire family is from Mount Pleasant, North Carolina. Okay. <laughs> uh, so Rowan <laughs> County is a little new to me, but um, we moved back in 2021 when <coughs> the housing market was just crazy, and Rowan opened us with open arms, and the Barris and Mecklenburg County did not. <laughs> so we are very happy to be here where we're wanted. We're happy to have you. Thank you. Does board have any questions for Ms. Davis? I'm just glad. That's absolutely. Thank you. I wish that was infectious. <laughs> I try. A lot of people involved in, in Roy County, especially. Let's we'll see what we can do. Well, thank involved. you very much. Thanks for being here tonight, too, and taking time out of your <laughs> schedule. Oh, of course. I'm going to just sit down. Leave it to stand <laughs> I think you can. Thank you. All right, so board, at this time, um, I will consider a motion to appoint Ms. Davis to the Community Appearance Commission contingent upon the board approving the changes to the bylaws next week to allow the additional memberships. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make the motion that we accept Ms. Davis on the Appearance Committee. I'll like to second. All right, there is a motion and a second. Motion by Mr. Miller, second by Mr. Morgan. Any further discussion? All in favor? All right, all opposed? And that is approved unanimously. Welcome aboard. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. All right, everyone. Our next order of business is to consider our agenda for the January 10th meeting. <laughs> Um, I do need a volunteer for the invocation on Tuesday, and that needs to be somebody that does not have a last name of Miller, since he's been so willing to Good. help us out recently. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be glad to say that. Okay. Thank you, Mayor Pritton. Very good. And then we will have our minutes for approval. If you would like to move those, the December 8th and 13th meeting, uh, meeting minutes, if you'd like to move those to the consent agenda, please let me know. Yeah. Okay. And then the sledge has uh, reviewed those. Thank you for doing that. All right. The next item will be additions or deletions. Of course, we can make additions or deletions on Tuesday night, but I know of one addition that we do need to consider tonight and find the place in the agenda for that. Um, Wes Thompson with Tax Assessor's Office has reached out and asked to be, uh, to be able to give a presentation to the board on the uh, property tax revaluation process. And so he will have an update for us Tuesday night uh, if we are willing to add that to the agenda. Okay. Um, and so as we consider that, my suggestion would be that we do that immediately after the public hearing, the, le or the legislative hearing that we have. And that way, anybody that's come for public <coughs> comment, they can also hear the update as well. Um, early, uh, early in the meeting. 
So if you're okay with moving that to item nine immediately after the legislative hearing. All right. Okay. Next item. Any other additions uh, that you know of tonight that we need to consider? Mr. Francis, anything else? No, sir. Okay. Thank you. All right. Next item. Are there recognitions that need to be made? I see Mayor Pro Tem already has a few written down. Yeah, we lost uh, two uh, wonderful educators in the North Grand community in the last few days. That's Chris and Coach Ralph Cattle, who worked for North in two years. And Coach Deborah Brown started the rest of the day. I think they both need to be recognized. I know election funeral is Saturday. You may want to wait and do it for the February meeting. I don't know. Uh, Coach Adderley is a case of the sun. I don't know about any of them. I don't know if any of the family would feel like coming. I don't know. You know. Right. Um, I do think it's appropriate to go ahead and make the recognitions okay. if you're willing to do that. On I will. Right. I'll be glad to do it. Okay. They're both going to uh, Oh, you hate to use the word irreplaceable, but they both were pretty darn close to it. Other recognitions? Okay. I will, um, I'd like to make one for our public works crew for <laughs> their flexibility here recently with uh, waste collection. Given their Amen. equipment failures, so it's been <laughs> pretty amazing. When I pulled up to my house about a week ago and uh, saw them loading everything out by hand, hand. Yeah. <laughs> that takes a special. I felt, I felt really right. guilty. Felt like I needed to be the one doing. That. <laughs> so, I want to recognize the city of Concord for helping us out. Absolutely, <laughs> we'll recognize all of that. Okay. Any others? Okay. All right, we'll then have public comment. Our, poli oh, our, yes. our, our police department for their um, activities of monitoring traffic. Yes. You want to do that? I will. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was great. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, the other thing that, I, well, that I would like to do since the fire department, since you're having your awards and banquet on Saturday to be able to provide the recognition at our meeting so the public is aware of that too. So we'll add that at that point if that yeah. works for you. Okay. All right. Anything else? All right. We'll have public comment and then consent agenda approval. So as we go through this agenda, Proposed agenda, let me know if you want to move anything to consent agenda. Um, we will have a legislative hearing on a proposed text amendment, um, and that is the uh, Community Appearance um, Commission recodification, and then to increase the total membership of the CAC and clarify uh, rules for a quorum and voting. So Mr. Harris will give us an update on that. The next item is to um, consider adopting a resolution that would amend the Salisbury Avenue Corridor Improvement Grant Program guidelines uh, to allow for certain exceptions in the case of um, the case of extraordinary circumstances or emergencies. That will also be an update by Mr. Harris, and then subsequently there will uh, be consideration uh, following that vote of an award. Um, in the amount of $4,000 for an emergency building repair project. So those would all be regular agenda items. Anything we need to know about that tonight? Point. Uh, the $4,000 is sort of a placeholder at this point. I'll give more information about this next week. Um, I did, uh, the contractor was actually uh, out of the country over the holidays and was not able to give Pam and Roger a final price. Um, the price may be lower between two and three thousand dollars, but um, I'll have a final determination on that price next week. Okay, great. Thank is, you, Mr. Harris. Is this um, is is this a, a, um, an additional 
amount added to their original grant, or is it a second grant? This would be a second grant. A second grant. Thank you. All right. The next item that we have, you have um, a memo in front of you. It's in addition to your agenda, agenda packet. We did receive um, quotes back on the um, Streamflow Rehabilitation Grant Program or the STRAP program. And that is for uh, woody debris removal um, from portions of Grants Creek. Um, and so basically we did receive two proposals on that. Um, and the low bidder uh, was in the amount of $60,539, and so we will consider awarding that contract uh, for that project at that time. What I will say is that amount is much, much less than the $250,000 grant amount that we got, which is wonderful. So there is the potential um, to add additional scope to that project uh, for additional debris removal. This is in conjunction with the city of Salisbury and the county. the county. Yes, okay. that's right. So this is just our full thing. This would be all of it, right? Because we got the grant. The town of Spencer got the grant. I'm I'm happy to yeah, go ahead speak. So the the town uh, and uh, Rowan County, by way of the Soil and Water Conservation District, both applied for and were awarded grants uh, separately. Uh, now, when in our process of applying, we imagined when we found out we were both awarded, we imagined being able to collaborate with the county on perhaps a shared uh, procurement process. Uh, it, when it, we started approaching the deadline of needing to have the funds awarded uh, by February, it seemed like the county may not be was not prepared to move as quickly as we were on that. So we went ahead with our RFP process. That resulted in this. Uh, now you, you'll note uh, recent newspaper articles I think about the county doing their portion so they're planning I think to do a separate award once uh, their proposals come in. Uh, but I, I will say in terms of the grant you mentioned the amount $250,000 or so that was based on us estimating $25 a linear foot uh, uh, and this bid came in more at the five to six dollars a linear foot, so that's favorable uh, bidding scenario for us, and it's going to allow us to, uh, as the mayor mentioned, uh, get into some additional areas uh, from what we originally hoped. Do we do we have a time frame? Do we have to use this money? The I believe uh, I believe there is. I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but Mr. The, Morris is planning to be here on Tuesday. Yes, now so, and he's, he's been. And he's actually on the Zoom call as well. Joe, Joe, twenty uh, twenty four. Oh, hang on a second, Joe. We can't hear you yet, but okay. Uh, here, you, here's Joe. Hello. <laughs> so, so we have um, until the end of twenty twenty four to uh, expend the funds. Uh, we actually had two hundred and eighty thousand dollars appropriated for uh, the Spencer uh, drainage basins. Uh, predom predominantly, Grants Creek was what we were seeking funds for, and the estimate that we provided in the application of twenty-five dollars a linear foot was um, a Yes, I'll be honest. We just we um, we just put that number in, and the uh, the bids came in significantly lower. Um, uh, Matt Safford, who is the grant administrator for the Department of Agriculture, has uh, communicated to us that we will be able to um, use uh, the funds for other uh, smaller tributaries that are feeding Grants Creek. And so uh, this is sort of the um, the part of the funding process that actually uh, meets the um, the primary requirement of removing um, woody debris from Grants Creek uh, adjacent to the Spencer uh, city lim town limits. Um, and so um, we're just asking the board on Tuesday to authorize the town manager 
um, to execute the agreement so that we can begin uh, the work uh, in the next week, few weeks to months. And I will say the immediate deadline we're up against is that the grant asked that half of our funds were under contract by February 28th. Mm -hmm. Now, we're not, we're not uh, to the point of awarding half the funds due to the, the bid coming in so low. And that was something that Mr. Morris asked about. They were not concerned with it actually being half of the funds. They wanted to make sure people were making quick progress, and we and we are. So uh, we're on a, a good path with this. Other questions? I got some questions, but I'll wait to go with you. Okay. Okay. So we'll keep that then on the regular agenda for Tuesday. And then we will have a presentation on our audit report uh, for fiscal year 21-22 from RHCPAs. And I'm going to invite Mr. Softly forward because he is going to provide us a quick update tonight. Good evening. Good evening. Um, the good thing is the report was done when we said it was going to be done. Um, we actually it was a little bit later in the month than we anticipated because as we're reviewing it, um, as with any federal program like ARPA, they were still making some changes and how we were initially going to present it, we had to change it. So, but we still got it changed, it submitted. Um, you'll have the audit manager, uh, Nick, <coughs> who was here last year and he'll be here again, uh, to present it to you. I will say the audit process went extremely smooth this year. Um, as far as getting information, giving information. Um, personally, from my viewpoint, I have no complaints at all with them as far as uh, responsiveness or timeliness or anything, any questions I had. Um, so he will present it, so I'm not going to delve into the report itself, but I will say this, and this is nothing that is not unknown to you, since you did receive monthly financial reports. The town had a very good financial year, and it will be reflected in the future. Um, so, again, from a staff viewpoint, from my viewpoint, we we're very pleased with the firm. Uh, to let you know, uh, we will be going out for an RFP because of the offer of funding. It's not something that we're doing. It's pretty much Everybody is being required to do that as part of this process. This current year, uh, we'll be asking for quotes for both a normal audit like we have gotten this year and historically, but also for a single audit. Um, I do not anticipate that uh, the town will meet the single audit threshold this year. Uh, that threshold has been raised. It's now 750000 you to be a half an inch, but it's 750. Don't think we're going to get there. But just in case, uh, we ended up spending some of our HUD funds on housing that we got. Uh, that would put us over that. We're going to have that as there. But I do expect that we will have a single audit uh, at the following year. So uh, we're going to be prepared for it. Um, hope to get that RFP out in January with a goal to have this board award that contract in March so that we'll be in front of everybody else hopefully because I'm sure that a lot of people are going to be delayed getting it out and I want to be in front of that for, and, and get a firm and, and get one so we can go ahead and start planning and be on time for next year. So, with that, I ask, I'd be happy to answer any questions any of you may have. Any questions for Mr. Softly? All right. And I do want to apologize up front. I can't be here Tuesday night. I'm having <coughs> another speaking engagement. So, <laughs> thank you. Very good. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. All right. Next item we'll hear about on Tuesday is to consider accepting a uh, safety risk reduction grant from the North Carolina League of Municipalities. Um, you do have an agenda item 
uh, a page, loose page that's not in your notebook, I believe. If that's correct, and that that will be added in as we publish the final agenda. Uh, this is a, a matching grant from the league of that reimbursed half our costs on items that uh, were included already in the budget with some of the other grant funds the fire department has received. Uh, so this will supplement some of that. Okay. And these are for ballistic vests and helmets for the fire department staff. Uh, and in light of what we have seen in a neighboring community recently, um, we're glad to see that we're uh, we're going to be able to do that. Um, any questions on that? You want to keep that as a regular agenda item? We can get an update from Chief then on Tuesday. Yep. Okay. And then the next item is to consider adopting a series of policies for the Spencer Library. And those policies are around material selection and review, collection weeding policy, and a patron policy. Mr. Francis, you want to give a quick update for the board on that? Sure. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Board. Uh, this is a, an item that staff's been working on for several months to bring before you to make sure our library is operating. Uh, according to best practices in, in the field and consistent with our uh, peer organizations. And appreciate uh, Scott taking the lead of uh, working uh, with Beverly on um, <coughs> getting these put together. And, and the policies that you see uh, were largely adapted from policies that Rowan County had in place and uh, using a model put forth uh, by the, the American Library Association. Okay. So, board, do we want to? Are they going to be prepared? Are they prepared to give a overview of that on Tuesday, or is that the plan? It, it, it's it's your pleasure. It, you know, this could be a consent agenda item if right. if you'd like, um, or if you'd like to get more information, we can. So, what does the board want to do? This item on Tuesday. Scott will be here. I, I believe she could be. Yep. Hello, I'm also on Zoom. Yep. If if you have any questions tonight, okay. but I can also fully present on Zoom in person or on in person on Tuesday if you would prefer. Yep. What's the board's reference? I mean, we're not really loaded. I, it'd probably be nice to hear something okay. different yeah. a little bit. I think That's it'd be good for some the town to hear too. But yeah. To sometimes we have, sometimes I think we don't put enough interest on the library. Mm -hmm. And she does a good job. I think we've got blue. Okay. Sounds good. <coughs> so I I, I, would, I did um, wonder about the material history waiver and release form. I don't recall ever seeing anything like that from the library. Is that is that standard? Um, no, it's not actually. Um if you like I can I can give you a little bit of detail on that. Um so the purpose of that is um, I wanted to include a patron privacy policy, which um, reaffirmed the uh, North Carolina statutes reg regarding the right to read, right to read in privacy, and to not have your reading history publicly available. Um, our, so that, that is uh, state standards. And when I was discussing this with Beverly, she mentioned that there are quite a few people in the library system who enjoy having their recommendations uh, brought to them by Beverly, um, recommendations made by what other people in their reading group enjoy. So this would be a waiver that patrons could sign, which would allow Beverly to um, give them those recommendations, but only by their explicit per permission and only for that specific purpose only. Thank you for that clarification. Guy, would that subvert the public records? Exemption, I'm assuming, that applies to library records? Um, I don't believe so. Um, I will follow up with Jay to confirm, though. Okay. I, I'm, I'm not familiar with that part of 132, so I'm, I'm just curious about that. I would imagine it wouldn't, but that's something we probably definitely want to know. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you, Sky. Of course. All right. Well, then, here uh, from our departmental reports. Um, I do know that we, um, Joel, I think you're going to give us an update tonight on the CCAP program. So we'll invite you forward for that now if uh, you're prepared to do that.
Susan and Mayor and members of the board. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, just an update, uh, the, I put one at each one of your places. This is actually the quote from Bill on the uh, buffer uh, planting. Um, he did deduct uh, $540 from that. I'm going to supply the mulch for him. Um, but this will still warranty the plants when he installs it. So um, this would be the amount of $11,070 for the total buffer. Uh, we receive, I believe it's 20,000 from the CCAP, um, and but this would be added on top of that. This is not included in the CCAP portion. So Peter and I have discussed options on whether, you know, how to pay for this so we can move forward. And it's at your pleasure whether you would like to accept this and, and move forward. And then at this case, once you, or if you accept this, then we'll go back to the homeowners with this plan. Um, since the, you know with the backing of the board, so so we're we're looking for consensus on the on the idea of proceeding kind of with this additional scope from the pro uh, for the project in order to ensure the neighboring property owners are comfortable with the end result. Um, and should you uh, have the consensus on that, we would bring back uh, next month likely a uh, a budget amendment um, to cover those expenses and we've talked with John about a few options uh, he mentioned the very strong uh, results last year and so far for example our uh, our property and sales tax revenues are coming in strong this year we think there would be the ability to uh, allow that to go towards this or you also have uh, of course programs contingency into your into your uh, into your budget so uh, that's another way that we could fund this amount, but we mainly want to get consensus tonight to allow us to continue uh, getting everything lined up. And so, Joel, just for the board's information, the the reason for the buffer was from the homeowner meetings. That's correct. What was the concern that they expressed? By remove by removing some of the vegetation along the top side of the bank, because we're going to extend we. The road limits us. We can't go towards the roadside, so we have to go towards the property owner side. And we will be into their property in some places 10 feet, some a little bit more. Um, and by removing that vegetation, they were concerned that that vegetation wouldn't put back in time enough to provide that buffer that they bought those houses with the intention of that buffer. They wanted that buffer back there to where they can enjoy their their backyard, that kind of stuff. So the concern was mentioned by removing because we're going to have to take not a lot of big trees, but there are going to be several because the roots are already hanging into the into the creek. Um, we're going to have to remove several of the big trees and widen that bank that bench. This would provide because these trees that are going in are already will be six and seven feet tall. And they'll be staggered to where it'll actually be a buffer with the new creek and then the buffer into their backyard so it doesn't really cause any disturbance. And that's what they were asking. And that'll help stabilize the, the work top that's side been of the done. Bank. Yeah. Correct. Okay. And we can put these these are native plants. Um we went with that specifically with Cindy's recommendation. We can plant this in the top of their buffer zone so we don't have to go above It'll be in the construction zone. It will not be further back. If we went unnative, we'd have to stay out of the out of the buffer. So this will be on the top side with the disturbed, so it will be all in one. There won't be anything disturbed past that. This quote doesn't include labored installers. It does. It does. It does. Yes, sir. Are these trees guaranteed for a year? Uh, it would. Uh, I assume that's with his installation. That's what normally builds. Bill's okay. warranty is yes, sir. And they feel comfortable. All the property owners feel comfortable about this, or well, once we get consensus and we understand, we're going to take this back to that. them. With they know kind of a preliminary plan, uh, but not exact. This is more of an exact plan. We have it plotted out. Uh, I've got some other information. Cindy has actually plotted it into those lots, so we know exactly where they're going to be. This will be the information we'll take back to the homeowners once we get, you know, permission. Cindy feels comfortable that these trees will cut the flow back as far as the flow going in the backyard. Uh, the 
as far as water? Yeah. Oh, uh, the water will not get out of, it shouldn't get out of the bank going towards their house. Okay. Yeah, yeah, this that, is that's the purpose of the sea cap, yeah, the regrading and everything. Re this is yeah. just as a buffer for visual, but, but, but it yeah. will help hold that bank yeah. even yes. more than what saying. the original design was. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, normally they live stake it, uh, which is just saplings that they actually put through the matting. This will actually just, they'll live stake it as well. Um, but this will just add a little bit better on that top edge. It'll hold. Um, these plants are, are pretty fast growing as well. The cedars are, the hollies are a little slower, but they'll be a little bit bigger to start. How many lots involved? How many lots? Uh -huh. um, there are five total um, that span from the lot before Pickett Avenue and then four lots past Pickett Avenue. To where the, the crossing is actually at the, I guess where it turns back and goes towards Grant Street. Um, and that is the, the area that's the most concerned. There really will be a little bit of dredging on the other end just to straighten up that pipe that goes under Pickett Avenue. It's kind of off centered now because the creeks change direction. So that'll be just more or less small grading in that area. This is, would be on the other side of Pickett Avenue. Uh, where they're going to widen that that turn to make that water flow easily and then it'll be a wider to hold the water get it out of the road from further up 17th kind of just the first in the many stages of this so this will be an adequate number of plants to, offer, yes, to do the buffer mm -hmm. then yeah by design that's what these that's what it calls for that's mm -hmm. what cindy laid out yes ma'am other questions from the board Yes, once once they're planted, the property owners are responsible for keeping them up, or uh, basically they're they're self 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 controlling. They 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 won't re require any trimming or anything like that. They're they're more of a hedge okay. than they are trees or bushes. Um, eventually, they'll actually grow together um, and form a solid hedge across there. It's more most for um, aesthetics and noise reduction is what it's for. So would a town continuously put mulch there? Just one time. Uh, it'll be just a one time. Uh, the nat the natural area, being leaves, pine needles, whatever falls, will actually take care of them. And you're the not going to mulch the whole. It's just the tree. It's just the tree itself. Yeah. Okay. To, to just to, at, at the time of planting. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions? So. General consensus to move forward with it, and I told Peter when he mentioned this to me, I said, "Well, the other issue is the longer we wait, the more expensive the project That's is." Exactly oh. right. Of course, <laughs> we got to show that we're interested in helping that community. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the first starts. Fair forward, I think we should be. All right. Looks ahead. like you had general consensus. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. <clears throat> All right, uh, next item, we'll have our town manager report and then request and comments from the mayor and board, and then an executive session uh, if needed, and then we'll adjourn. Anything else that needs to be added to the agenda on Tuesday? All right, hearing none, is there a need to go into an executive session tonight? And hearing no reason? Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion by Mr. Muhammad. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mayor Pro Tem. All in favor? All, right. all opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you Bye. all. Mm -hmm.